Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 8 Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though it be a though they be a rebellious house. I like to start off by saying call halal la Yahweh by Shimi Shai, which means all praises to Yahweh, the Father in the name of the Son, Yahweh Shai. I also like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word of sincerity and truth. All right, I don't know the title of this show, but Lord's willing, uh, he gave give me a title on the load up. And um, I was reading here in Ezekiel, the third chapter, and which is a beautiful chapter. And, um, you know, the Lord made Ezekiel as an example. You know, he told us to eat this roll and he told us to go out and prophesy. And this roll represents the word. All right. So before I get into the major point of the lesson, I'm just going to start here at the first verse. This is Ezekiel chapter three and one. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. And like I said, when the Lord told Ezekiel to eat this roll, he was talking about eat this word, meaning to learn, meaning to study, you know, growing the knowledge, growing the, the understanding, and uh, receive the wisdom from the word. All right. It says verse two. So I opened my mouth. And he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, son of man, cause thou, son of man, cause thou belly to eat and fill thou bowels with the with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. You know, when you first eat this truth, it's, it's sweetness. You know, it tastes good. You want more and more. Because you realize, you know, from... You coming from the dry bones, you know, coming from your sleep. When you have awoken to the truth, which is your Bashim Yahweh Shah and his word, you know, you are full of light. You know now what to do that is good, and you know now know not to do which is bad. You know, so the word of the Lord is sweet. You know, you get that spirit in you. You want to tell everybody about the truth. You can't hold it in because you came across this word. The Lord opened you up, right? Verse 4, and he said unto me, son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. So who was Ezekiel sent to? He was sent to his people. Who was his people? The so-called Negroes, West Indians, Haitians, Hispanics, Native and Seminole Indians, the Hebrew Israelites. He was a prophet set up for his people. And when our people went off, the Most High would Send forth prophets to tell them what the Most High has to say. You either going to correct yourself or you're going to be destroyed. So it says, verse 4, And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel and speak my words unto them. And notice it says my words because it's the words of the Most High. Just like today, those of the whole four elect, us brothers here, a uh, great millstone, you know, our brothers Apostle said, you know, this is, you know, this is the camp of prophets, man. You know, we, we teach, we prophesy in season, out of season. You know, we're teaching the words of the Most High. All right. We're spreading forth the gospel in which Yahweh Shai, the son, told us to do. So it says, he said unto me, son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel and speak my words unto them. Verse five. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of an hard language, but to the house of Israel. All right. So the Lord never sent his prophets to go wake up the other nations. You know, he sent his prophets to a familiar people, which is of, of, of his people, of his nation. All right. So it says, for thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech. And of an and of an hard language, but to the house of Israel. So just more proof in the pudding that you know the Lord is for his people, as he always been. You know, a quick precept 
I quote, the Lord said, uh, uh, he, uh, he changed not, least Jacob be consumed. So the Most High never changed. All right. When he raised up prophets, they were Israelites and they were sent to the Israelites. All right. But today, you know, in the same manner, we're out there to teach the hopeful elect, whoever they may be. When they hear this word, they repent. But we also are also sent to tell these other nations that they're going to go into captivity under Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai in, the king, in our kingdom of heaven. All right, so we out there to warn, to condemn, to reprove, and to rebuke, and to exhort the Most High's name. So it says, verse 5, For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of an hard language, but to the house of Israel, which is uh, Yasha Allah. The Hebrew word Yasha Allah is, is Israel, which means he prints power. All right. The men of the Lord are the princes of the Lord. And the women, they're supposed to be the princesses. All right? And we're the prince. And Israel, which goes into what? Comes from what? Jacob. Because when you read, Jacob's name was turned into Israel. And that's the 12. His sons became what? The 12 tribes. The chosen line. All right? Because Jacob received the birthright. You know, well, he supplanted Esau for the birthright. Which was really ordained by the Most High anyway to go to Jacob and his sons. All right, so verse 6. Not to many people of a strange speech and of an hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. See? So if we would have, the Most High would have sent his men to the other nations, they would have hearkened. You know, if, you know, people have this argument uh, about the New Testament, who Paul went to, Paul went to the Israelite foreigners. He went to men who, who lost their customs and ways of being a Hebrew Israelite. They were Israelites, but they took on the customs and the ways of the Greeks. They was Hellenized. All right. So Paul went to these men and even not just them, but everywhere Paul went when they was outside of the land of Israel. Jerusalem, you know, some of the, a lot of the Israelites, they may was, you know, born in a certain particular land and they took on the customs of that land instead of calling themselves Israelites and returning back to Israel every year for the Passover. All right. So it says not to many people of a strange speech and of an hard language whose words thou cannot understand. Surely had I sent them, sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me, for all the house of Israel are imprudent, imprudent and hard hearted. All right. So the Lord's telling Ezekiel that our people, his people, all right, are hard head, stiff neck and rebellious people. And that's another sign of us knowing who are the Israelites of the Bible. Who are the true Israelites of the Bible? Who are the true Jews of the Bible? Because of these characteristics. All right. And just another pointer on that note. As far as that subject. Okay. A stiff neck and hard headed rebellious people. That's you so called Negroes. Latinos. West Indians. Haitians. Hispanics. Native Seminole Indians man. All our people are spiritual people, but our people are hard-headed when it comes to serving Yahweh Barsham Yahweh Shai. And he told Ezekiel, he said, for they will not hearken unto me, for all the house of Israel are, are impru imp imprudent and hard-hearted, stubborn, right? Verse 8, behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. So, just like today, when we out teaching this word, you know, amongst our people in the marketplaces, you know, prophesizing uh, Isaiah 58 and 1, cry out loud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, show my people their transgressions, all right, that they have committed against the most high. Our people come and give us the most hell, more hell than Esau do on a, on a, on a regular basis, man, you know. So it says, behold, I have made thou face strong against their face because Israel 
you know, what they hear this truth, they don't care. You know, they're stuck in their ways. You know, they're, they're not willing to take correction. They don't want to hear what you got to say. If you don't look like money, you ain't talking money, you know, then they don't want to hear it. It says, Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. So the Most High made us to be as just as uh, uh, stubborn, right, as they are, but it's a difference. We have a righteous stubborn. They have a wicked stubborn, right? So it says, Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And Israel got the most meanest looks to intimidate you. You know, Jacob come across the, the black woman, the Hispanic woman, hey, the, the nigger of our nation, the, the man. He had come across and threaten you, say all manner of evil towards you so, so that you, you know, don't reprove him, don't correct him. So it says, as an adamant harder than flint have I made thou forehead. So that's the key. All right. I was reading here and, um, you know, the Lord drew me in the spirit to look this up, which is adamant. Right. And I know, brothers, we all know these, uh, uh, this scripture and, um, you know, I just love going into the word and like the apostles taught us to get into the words and um, the word adamant. Right. I believe the Hebrew word is his Shamaya, Shamaya. Right. And um, you go down. It says thorns, adamant, flint, thorns, thorn bushes, adamant, a sharp stone. All right. So it gives you of what it is, a sharp stone. All right. Flint, perhaps a diamond. So the word adamant can you can be used for a diamond you know a, a a gem like certain stones a us brothers we all got certain stones we deal with you know certain stones like the uh the sun guide, you know the onyx stone uh sapphire you know all these different stones can also be called an adamant stone all right because it's hard it's a stone right uh let's see here pricking thorn right so this gives me a gem see gem right diamond okay so that gives me something, right? But um, I did a little digging and I just went into the etymology, etymology adamant. And it says hard, unbreakable from adamant in a sense of unshakable. All right. Unshakable. It says, uh, uh, it says, Old English adamans, a very hard stone. Modern word is a is a mid 14th century borrowing of old French adamant, diamond, magnet, or directly from the Latin adamantum. All right, which is a uh, adamant, hardest iron still, or used figuratively of character. So this in also, also can be used, you know, for someone figuratively like this person's character. This person, he's a hard head. You know, he doesn't move. He don't budge. All right. He's unbreakable, hard. Uh, what else it says? Unshakable. Right. Uh, from the Greek, Adamus. Uh, let's see here. Uh, name of a hypothetical hardest material. Now use in an objective meaning unbreakable, inflexible, right? Which was metaphoric of any of anything unalterable, unaudible, such as Hades, a word of uncertain origin, right? Unbreakable, inflexible. Just getting into it a little bit. Uh, it's you come down here. It says uh. Invincible, uh, it is perhaps literally invincible, indomitable. You know, you can't dominate it, you can't take it over because that person is an adamant. All right, you can use it phys figuratively, or it can it can also be used to you know just to name a stone, just to put a name there for a stone or gem. All right, uh, domain, domain, 
to conquer, to tame, right? So like a horse, you know, if you conquer a horse, you want to break the horse because the horse be stubborn and be bucking. So if you get to break the horse, you know, then what? That horse was like an adamant, you know? You know, and let me get the picture. That's it, man. All right, so right there. All right, now, so getting back, it says, um, as an adamant, harder than flint. Now, I looked up the word flint because I wanted some understanding. All right, just some deeper understanding. And uh, going to the word flint, and it says flint, hard pebble, used as a knife. And then when you read some more down, it says what? Uh, sharp stone. All right, so as a flint, a flint is, is a sharp stone. You know, a lot of the Gadites and Reubenites, you know, they used to take stone and sharpen it into like a knife, you know? So it says sharp stone, that's the key word there. A knife, flint, sharp stone, a knife, a rock, right? So let's let me go back. It says, as an adamant harder than flint, have I made thou forehead? So the difference between the hard heads, because Israel himself has a hard head, right? Stubbornness, not willing to, uh, what to say, unshakable, and and do not and uh, dominable. You know, you can't, you know, you can't get over on the person. You can't correct this person to change, right? So Israel is like that. But the Lord said He made His prophets. As an adamant harder than flint. Okay, so you have a stone, but you have not only a stone, you have a sharp stone. So it says, Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. So, what we have here, you have two stones. If you can imagine this, you have two stones. All right, and one stone is a sharp stone. The other, you know, once and another stone is just a regular rock, you know, groove, you know, no grooves around it, just smooth rock. If you bang these stones together, what happens? The sharp stone ends up breaking the normal stone. And that's what the Most High made us. He made us as a sharp stone. Okay? You know, unshakable, unmovable, you know, and what? Unshakable in being in his truth, or teaching his truth unmovable you know invincible you know so that <laughs> hey there you go man you know that, that's beautiful man you know israel is a is a is a, is a hard head but the most high made us a, a righteous hard head for this truth so that's why when anyone come up and they talking that garbage their rhetoric and not coming throughout the scriptures of the lord then what they get cut they stone get broken they minds get, get cut. That's where the stone lies at. That stony heart. You know, that stony heart, man. That adamant stony heart. But we of an adamant sharp stone. As an adamant harder than flint. Have I made, have I made thy forehead? You know? And that's why the brothers, you know, the scriptures also say he would make thee a battle axe and weapon of war. You know, well, right now, spiritually... We're a, a, a battle wax, but it's going to be physically, we're going to turn into that battle wax and weapon of war because it's right now it's a spiritual war, you know, and soon it's going to be a physical war when our Lord Yahweh Shai and the angels appear, man. So, you know, that's all I got. I hope, you know, this lesson was edifying to those of the whole for elect. You know, I was trying to piece this together the best way I can through the spirit of the Lord. You know, I was reading here, like I said, and uh, I got to that. I started looking little things up and, you know, that came in my mind. And I thought it was uh, neat to put it together and do a show on it. So uh, with that, I want to give all praise to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Kakadash. i like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect. Shalom.